Hey everybody and welcome to another Jamovi tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to do an independent samples t-test for you all. As always I'm using the most recent upgraded release of Jamovi 1.6.3 on Mac OS. Uh, you are able to download 1.2.27 though if you want a stable build without some of the new features. You don't need 1.6 to be able to do an independent samples t-test. So let's open some data and get into the tutorial. Okay, so here I have uh, a t-test data set open uh, with a number of, of ways that we can go through this. So for the most part, this t-test is going to be um, just a really quick look at a two group and one of the one of the continuous variables that I have here. So what I'm going to do is I am going to um, use the PhD variable. So these are people who are looking for PhDs. I don't have anything in the description, but these are people who are interested in a PhD or not interested in a PhD. Uh, we could also do uh, males and females, although I don't think I have my levels labeled here. So this is male and this is female. Anyone that we do really uh, will work. Uh, I just want to do something really, really quick. So why don't we do, uh, why don't we put in some information about PhD, not seeking, and uh, seeking. So these, these, uh, these students are in college and um, this is their GPA, how many hours a week do they study, how many hours a week do they uh, do they work, and a lot of other things, their extroversion score, how many siblings do they have. So there's a lot of information in here that we can use to do a independent samples t-test. So we go up here to t-test like we did in the previous episode of one sample t-test and then I'm going to click on independent samples t-test. That's going to go ahead and bring up the module here off to the side and as you can see we already have our table ready to go and some of these options already chosen. So what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, use PhD as my grouping variable and as you can see here I just clicked on it and I hit the button and we have a Venn diagram or a bars here which re represent nominal or ordinal variables. So that's what PhD is. As you saw me cleaning up the data, we had um, not seeking PhD and seeking PhD. And I'm going to go with a uh, dependent variable of GPA. And as you can see here, what we already get is our GPA variable here and a test statistic between the two. Uh, because that's not significant, I'm going to go ahead and throw in uh, study hours as well and see if we get... Nope, nothing there either. <laughs> it's in the opposite direction, though, so that's interesting. But so this is comparing uh, people who are not seeking a PhD versus people who are on their GPA and how many hours a week they study. So let's look at these options here so we can expand our view. Uh, because this is again is just the default. You get the T statistic, students T, you get the T statistic, the degrees of freedom, and your P value. And so that by default is listed there. You can also get Welch's or Welks. I've actually never um, uh, heard it spoken, so I don't know if it's uh, like Welch's grape juice or Welk, like a K, hard K sound. Um, so this is Welch's T. This is a corrected. T value, uh, and you would use Welch or Welk if you have violated your assumption checks. And so uh, we'll get to assumption checks in just a sec. You can also get the Man Whitney U if um, you're uh, using uh, ordinal variable here. Uh, it's a little bit more conservative. You get the U value as your statistic. You don't get any degrees of freedom for it, but you do get a, a P value here. Now, under a hypothesis, group one would not be equal to two. That is our two-tailed test. And then we have two 
one tail tests, one where we say, well, group one or my zero variable here, those not seeking PhDs, would have higher GPA or higher um, stu study hours compared to group two, those seeking. Or we could say the group two would be higher than group one in that case. So people who are seeking PhDs would have a higher uh, GPA and higher amount of study hours per week than those who are not seeking PhDs. And so by default, it is the two-tailed test, but we can switch it to the one-tailed test and see what happens to our statistic here and see if it's any closer. It is not. You can see the p-values do change, but our uh, other things do not change. So technically what happens is the p-value gets cut in half. Um, so you're you're closer technically to to rejecting the null hypothesis, but at what cost? Missing values you can exclude case uh, cases um, analysis by analysis. So we have two analyses here, and so if there's a missing value in GPA or there's a missing value in study, uh, it would only remove the case. Uh, it would only remove that particular row if it was only missing in one of these two and not both. That's what uh, cases list-wise do. So if there's any missing value in any of these three variables, that entire case would be uh, excluded. But of course, we don't want to do that. Just, you know, it's, it's, it's a good idea to leave it as analysis by analysis because you can have as many dependent variables in here and different tests as you can see. What I really do like is this note that um, Jamovi gives you when you choose one of the one-tailed tests. So the alternative hypothesis H, uh, little a, you can kind of barely see that little a, uh, not seeking zero, which is the code for that, not seeking PhD is less than one, seeking PhD. Those are just my two group codes, right? So additional st uh, statistics we can get is one is mean difference, and we can get a confidence interval for that mean difference. Uh, so we get the mean difference, and then we get the standard error, uh, standard error of that difference. And you can see that something's going on with this. I don't know uh, what I minus INF is here, uh, if that is entirely possible. It's very maybe because they're very close to each other. I'm not entirely sure why that's doing that. If I switch this to what happened? Yeah, I think it may have had to do with. Um, the uh, one-tailed test changing how uh, we get that information for the lower bound of the 95% confidence interval. We can get effect sizes. So the first two, students T and Welch's T, we get a D, Cohen's D for that, which is a, uh, which is a, a great ratio here. And you can see that these are very small effect sizes in D. And then since Man Whitney use a non-parametric test, we have rank by serial correlation uh, as the effect size. We can also get confidence intervals. And I believe only, yes, only students T gives us a confidence interval for Cohen's D. We do not get one uh, printout for uh, Welch's T or the rank by serial for the 95% confidence interval. We can also get descriptive statistics. It'll open a new table and we get our ends, our means, our median, standard deviation, and standard error for each of our groups on the two dependent variables. And we can also get descriptive plots. These are uh, just line plots or dot plots technically for each mean and median which are offset and uh, it looks like the bars here are 95% confidence intervals. And you can see here with study hours there is very little amount of studying uh, variance uh, around our statistic here. So it's a very thin margin. Most of them do this. And then most not seeking PhD uh, have significantly higher. It's entirely possible that I have reverse coded these, but that's okay. It doesn't really matter for this. Uh, and then we can get three nor uh, three assumption checks. We can check our homogeneity of variance. Uh, it plops that here under assumptions. 
So it inserts it before the descriptives. So we get the norma uh, homogeneity uh, variances test, Levine's test, gives us an F statistic for each of our dependent variables to see whether or not uh, we have uh, equal variances in our two groups. And it looks like we are doing okay there. We get the Shapiro-Wilk normality test for each of our dependent variables. And it looks like GPA is fine. Study doesn't look so good, though. Uh, the study variable doesn't look. We can also get a QQ plot for our residuals on um, our two variables, and it puts it with the plots themselves. Yeah, you can see here that the residuals are not good. And then we have this uh, dot way over here. You want the dots to fall in line on uh, the uh, quantiles on the line here, just like this one. So we know something's up with the study variable, uh, and uh, we'd have to probably use Welch's T or may even Man Whitney you in that case uh, to be more conservative since we violated on this study variable. That is independent samples t-tests in Jamovi. Thanks for watching this. Be sure to subscribe if you like this content. Be sure to leave a like if you like this video. And uh, stay tuned for more Jamovi tutorials as well as other psych and uh, stats related videos on this channel. Thanks for watching.